Hello friends, in this video we will be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of three funnel beaker culture women from Saxtorp in southern Sweden. They lived between 3900 and 3300 years before the common era or before the birth of Christ in a time period known as the European Neolithic. They practiced agriculture. Most of their ancestry derives from the European Neolithic farmers with a significant minority of ancestry from indigenous hunter-gatherers of Scandinavia. I suggest you check out my videos on Scandinavian hunter-gatherers and pitted wear people for a more thorough understanding of the situation. I give these women arbitrary names for ease of reference. The names I assign to them are Eve, Faith and Leanne. Let's begin this video. Let's begin with Eve. Um, Eve is predicted to have hazel or brown eyes, although really the prediction is um, very unsure right you look at this and you see nine percent likelihood of dark brown eyes 14 percent likelihood of blue eyes this is not a typical result with nashakot you're not if you uh, run your data file from nashakot you're not going to see something that looks like this the reason why is because um you're going to have all of the genotypes that are needed for the calculation she doesn't her file is actually really low quality and that's the case for all three of these women they all have really low quality files uh, when it comes to phenotype and all that stuff that's why you're going to see this video is going to be pretty short even though i'm talking about free genomes right so uh, keep that in mind it's a low quality file it's um bh4 and bh2 are undetermined and without knowing knowing them we can't really even say for sure what her eye color is but as it is right now the shot in the dark guess is that it's hazel or brown she's got greek shaped nose and black hair once again without knowing her genotype for bh2 we can't know that but you know the shot in the dark is that she has black hair based on the stuff that is in her file she most likely has black hair you understand what i'm talking about here she's predicted to have straight hair based on one snp once again based on the stuff that's in her file she's predicted to have straight hair that may not represent reality because the file is as i've said previously low coverage she's predicted to have amerindian followed by south asian followed by estonian eye shape based on four snps once again pretty poor prediction uh and on the right i actually wrote down some of the snps that she actually was genotyped for and this is the entirety this is actually all the coloring rela related variants that were present in her file so uh from this list you cannot really make an accurate guess of what she looked like and the guess of what she looked like is you see that on the screen that's hazel or brown eyes greek shaped nose and black hair now we're moving on to leanne uh, leanne's file is actually super small it's so small that i could not even upload this to gd match you're gonna see her results with admixture studio instead so leanne has got blue eyes or at least that's what she's predicted to have based on the very limited data we have on her she's got snub shaped nose and red hair and the reason she's got red hair is actually because she has two red hair variants in MC1R. Uh, she's got one derived variant in IRF4, which does sort of contribute to red hair. And uh, that together with the fact that she has light color variants in SLC2485, her 2 oka 2 uh, that kind of adds up to her having red hair and probably light skin as well and probably blue eyes as well. But we can't really know that without having her genotype for BH2, as I've said previously. She might have ancestral genotype in BH2 and have dark hair and dark eyes despite all of this so this is a uh, not a very reliable prediction as i've said i'm gonna say it again finally we are moving on to faith faith has got the highest quality file of the three she's predicted to have blue eyes with an amber center or hazel eyes snub shaped nose and black hair how come she's predicted to have non-blue eye color or you know such a dark eye color such as hazel for example while she has bh1 and bh2 well the reason for that is because bh3 is undetermined and she has this killer genotype which is two, two ancestral variants in this slc 45a2 variations which leads to darker skin coloring and other darker traits darker color of eyes and hair as well and i think this well i, I don't think i know that her genotype here is the reason uh, for her scoring such a dark eye color such as blue with neighbor center or hazel and not blue which would be the typical expected result right so she does not have any ginger variants in mc1r and you know i just included this here because i i wanted to fill up the space she's got darker color of eyes hair and skin based on her genotype in the tear gene and her eye shape prediction based on five snps is african or middle eastern or estonian and her hair shape prediction based on four snps is in this order curly followed by wavy followed by kinky actually uh, followed by straight so she definitely doesn't have straight hair well i mean i say definitely but really uh it's based on four snps so for the ethnicity we're gonna start with faith and i'm actually gonna show you all three women but let's start with faith right now uh this is what faith scores with eugene's k13 on ged match as you can see mostly scoring north atlantic and west mediterranean uh and 
a little bit of East Mediterranean Baltic as well with the Oracle. She is closest to Spanish from Andalusia. It's, it's a very south, the very south portion of Spain. Uh, and she's actually getting more of a mixture of Spanish plus Sardinian. Or, yeah, that seems to be it, Spanish plus Sardinian. Kind of interesting result. Maybe a little bit more hunter-gatherer or eastern hunter-gatherer shifted than what's typical for, uh, you know, other globular amphora or funnel beakers. At least from what I've seen, she, I, funnel beakers are not supposed to score Baltic, okay? This is what she scores with MDL PK11 Modern. Um, once again, there is a little bit of a shift towards eastern hunter-gatherers and Cocos hunter-gatherers here that you can see. Uh, she's scoring 9.5% EHG. And you can really see the shift towards the eastern side of Europe uh, with Pond DNA. Okay, then she, she's actually scoring 12.5% CHG here. Uh, this is definitely not a typical score for a global amphora or a funnel beaker. Uh, I'm thinking this is because of Eastern Hunter Gatherer elevated, Eastern Hunter Gatherer admixture. Uh, this would be my explanation for this phenomenon. She's closest to Spanish uh, with the Oracle here. And she's actually getting more as a mixture of Sardinian plus German. So you see this is where this is where you see the atypical stuff, right? Uh, typically Globular Amphora or Funnel Beaker would get modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus Basque, not Sardinian plus anything in Central Europe, right? And this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Um, kind of interesting result here. She is only scoring 5% Ancestral North Eurasian, so... I mean, th this looks pretty typical. This looks pretty typical for a um, Funnel Beaker individual. I'm, I'm guessing the Ancestral North Eurasian here comes from Eastern Hunter Gatherer admixture. And with the Oracle, you can actually see line number three Anatolian Neolithic plus Scandinavian Hunter Gatherer. Or there's also line number six Anatolian Neolithic plus Matala 12, which is, uh, it does accurately describe what their ancestry is. It's a mixture of European um, Neolithic farmer plus European Hunter Gatherer. Uh, there's also lines 12 through 15, which also kind of say the same thing. Now we're moving on to Eve, and Eve's results are. Uh, much more stereotypically funnel beaker in my opinion. Uh, she's not scoring any Baltic as you can see only 0.6% Baltic uh, which is once again what you would expect. You wouldn't expect funnel beakers to score any of that. Uh, with the Oracle she's closest to Spanish, Aragon, Andalusia is in the south. I don't know where Aragon is. And Basque, comment number four. She's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Basque plus Sardinian which is um, very much precise in terms of um, you know if you want to model Global Ram for or funnel beakers with modern ethnicities, they would get modeled as a mixture of Basque plus Sardinian, 100%. This is what she scores with MDLP K11, and once again, this is a more stereotypically funnel beaker result. Only 3.5% EHG here, so not a lot of CHG, not a lot of Easter Hunter Gatherer or Cocos Hunter Gatherer shift. Uh, with Pond DNA LK10, you, you can see once again, this is a much more stereotypically funnel beaker result. Only 3% CHG here. Uh, so there really isn't any Eastern like affinities, Eastern European affinities in this individual. It's a very Western result. And um, you're going to see with the Oracle here, she's closest to Sardinians, followed by Basque. So she's a little bit more Southern than the Basques. Uh, hence why she's closest to Sardinians. And she's actually getting more of this mixture of Sardinian plus Basque with the Oracle. But as you can see, she's majority Sardinian and minority Basque uh, with the results. So she is a little bit more Southern uh, southern shifted in terms of admixture. This is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. As you can see, once again, it's a very stereotypically like funnel beaker result. There is no ancestral North Eurasian here as, at all. No ancestral North Eurasian admixture whatsoever. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic plus Western Hunter Gatherer or European Neolithic plus Western Hunter Gatherer. So a mixture of, once again, it, it is a very stereotypically funnel beaker result. It's a mixture of European Neolithic farmer plus European Hunter Gatherer, mostly. Uh, the Neolithic farmer part is the biggest component here. Now I'm going to show you Leanne's results. Now Leanne's file is too small to be uploaded on GD Match, uh, so I just kind of had to use Admixture Studio here. This is what Leanne scores with Eurogenes K13. As you can see, she's closest to Southwest French, followed by Spanish, uh, but her result is kind of extreme. It's extreme because she's scoring 18.8% Baltic, and that's not something you would expect to see. Um, in a funnel beaker at all. So she seems to be very northern and kind of Baltic shifted. Um, this is Leanne's result with MDLP World K11. Um, based on this result, it's a very, as you can see, it's a very northern shifted result. Uh, very different from what you've seen with the previous two women. And maybe Leanne had a little bit of uh, pitted wear or some kind of um, additional Scandinavian hunter-gatherer admixture that could explain her results here. Now we're going to be checking out the results with my genome analyzer tool which is on my website and uh, you will be able to find it there. It's on, also on my GitHub. Let's start with Eve. All right, it's going to ask us to enter a name. We're going to enter Evie. So 
What about EV? So she's got TG genotype in this variation of MAOA, which means intermediate activity of the MAOA enzyme and kind of one worry or one worry allele. She's got two no go variants, no go learner variants. I'm trying to work on my pronunciation, okay? Uh, give, cut me some slack, okay? So she's got two no go learner variants in DRD2 pro in pro variation, which causes a significant reduction in the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, a reduction in the risk of schizophrenia, blah, 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 basically less dopamine D2 receptor sites availability. Um, what about this? So she's got a genotype in this variation of DRD4, which is implicated in a higher likelihood of schizophrenia. Uh, what else? AA genotype in this variation of DRD3, which increases the risk of autism and autistic personality traits, and this seems to be a mostly Eurasian genotype. Um, and CC here in DRD1, which is a typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions. Uh, what about lactose persistence? Does not carry derived variants for European lactose persistence. TT here in OXTR, which means less empathy. Uh, but typically with OXTR, we want to go by this variation here, but since she's not genotyped for anything here, we're going to have to go with this genotype instead. Uh, for diabetes, CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in risk of type 1 diabetes. You know, for a free megabyte file, she does have a lot of information here, so it's pretty cool. Uh, GG genotype here in CIS-282 tier, which means the individual is not a carrier for the C-282Y hemochromatosis mutations, not a carrier for the hemochromatosis variant. Um, no APOE2 alleles, so probably does not have Alzheimer's, and no micro P, you know what that is, I'm not going to pronounce that for you, CC here, which means better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete, uh, GG here in SCN9A, no variance for increased pain sensitivity, and let's see polygenic risk scores for her. So she's got pretty much average odds of schizophrenia, slightly below average, but like pretty much, pretty much average. Um, well, nothing was found for diabetes. That's why the, the result is like this. This is just the basic result. Uh, no, nothing was found in her file about that. And she has a slightly below average score for Alzheimer's. And the reason for Alzheimer's is that for the slightly below average, below average score, she has CC here. Okay, so that was... Um, who was that? That was Eve. Okay. Now we're going to reset everything. And we're going to open our next individual, which is going to be Faith. Faith's file is a little bit higher in quality, so let's see Faith. Uh, Faith has AA in Comets Valmet variation. Very crazy. Um, very, like, incredibly stereotypically European results. So she's a warrior in Compt. She's got uh, slower dopamine breakdown, more dopamine building up in her system because of the lower activity of Compt enzyme. And she has two derived no go learner variants in DRD2 Pro Fenantine Pro. Once again, I think the previous woman, Eve, had um, two no go learner variants as well. So they both have two no go learner variants in DRD2 Pro Fenantine Pro, uh, less dopamine D2 receptor sites availability. And she's got, but she's got AA here in DRD2, which is implicated in an increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and increased likelihood of schizophrenia. So uh, this genotype and this genotype, they kind of go against each other. Uh, they con they well, this genotype right here would increase the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in her brain a little bit, and this genotype would decrease a little bit. But the main uh, variation that actually matters the most for that, you would be surprised. It's not no-go learner. It's not this. It's actually this. It's, it's the TAC1 variation, which she's not genotyped for. So she does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation, and she also has CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. By the way, this is a sevenfold decrease relative to the opposite genotype, which will be the TT. This is not sevenfold decrease relative to the average person. So don't don't be looking at this and think, wow, they have this. Uh, they both have this cra crazy rare genotype that reduces the risk of type 1 diabetes by seven times. No, you probably have the same genotype here. It's sevenfold decrease relative to TT, not relative to the average. The average person has exactly this here. The average person has CC here. Um, so really, it's t it's TT that is sevenfold increase in a way. That, that would be the more correct way to phrase it. So, um, okay, not a carrier of albinism. We don't really care about that. Let's see polygenic risk scores for her. So her polygenic risk scores are as such. She's got two times less, um, two times less the odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans, and a little bit more than two times less the odds of schizophrenia for Sub-Saharan Africans. So definitely doesn't have schizophrenia. Uh, she's got slightly above average odds of diabetes, type two diabetes, and she's got below average odds of Alzheimer's. Okay, interesting. We're gonna reset the scores. We're gonna 
reset all that and now we're gonna um, look at Leanne our final individual Leanne okay um Okay, so Leanne also has two derived no go learner variants in their Ditos Pro. That's crazy. So, uh, three of these women, and they all have two no go learner variants in their Ditos Pro for this improvisation. You know how bizarre that is? Like, okay, this is a very stereotypically European genotype to have. Outside of Europe, it doesn't occur. Like, outside of Europe, you're never going to find an African or an East Asian with AA genotype here. But even in Europe, even in Europe, AA genotype is something like 20 or 25% of people. So the fact that all three of them have AA genotype is kind of crazy. I think it is. And it's a super European, it's a super European variation too. Uh, which does, the A the a allele here does decrease the number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. I will re remind you that again and sort of protect the person from schizophrenia and bipolar, various other mental health conditions. She's got CT genotype in this variation of OXTR, which is associated with decreased OXTR expression and lower levels of empathy, but we don't really care about that because we mainly care about this variation right here, and she's not genotype for that. And she has impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than sprinter. And once again, no variance for increased pain sensitivity. Now let's see her polygenic risk scores. So for the polygenic risk scores, she's got below average odds of schizophrenia. Um, a little bit less than average, a little bit less than average odds of diabetes, and I think nothing was found for Alzheimer's, yes? Yes, nothing was found for Alzheimer's, so we don't really know about her Alzheimer's score, and uh, that's pretty much it, that's, that's all there is to this individual. Well, thanks for watching my video until the end, you can download all three samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video, and um, leave a like and subscribe, goodbye!